Welcome to Marin Poets Live. I'm Neshama Franklin. I work at the Fairfax Library and I love poetry. So it is a special pleasure for me to share this opportunity to introduce you to poets from our county in the flesh, as it were, as they read and discuss their work. Monthly tapings will be broadcast on Marin TV and then become part of a special page on our website, along with the biographies of the poets and links to our collection. This is a partnership with the Marin Poetry Center. A common thread throughout the programs will be discovering how living in Marin has influenced their poetry. Those of you who already love poetry will appreciate this direct transmission from the poet to the listener, you. Those who might think of poetry as esoteric or abstract will discover how it can sing when read aloud. For our sixth program, we welcome Kay Ryan. Hi, Kay. Hello, Nishama. Here we are. And you are I, you're like the mother of us all, as in Gertrude <laughs> Stein, because you have been our poet laureate for the United States for two years running, and you're a faithful patron of the Fairfax That's Library. That's right. <laughs> you know, the alpha and omega of our experience. But as we do in all our programs, start us off with a poem that links us to Marin. This, it won't be obvious, the link, but I, I will make it clear. Um, I live in Fairfax, and I live near, not too far from Deer Park, and I've, I've run and bicycled through Deer Park many times. Uh, and um, I, uh, I have a poem here called Deer, and it, uh, it's really an incantation. Uh, it's, it's, it's really about how difficult it is to start. How, and how critical beginning is. I mean, we all know that anybody trying to do anything, the starting is the, is the, is the, is the great barrier. Uh, and this uses as its metaphor, generating deer. To lure a single swivel ear, one tentative twig of a leg, or a nervous tail here, is to mark this place as the emperor's park, rife, I say rife with deer. For if one leaf against the littered floor be cleft with the true arc, all this lost ground and more becomes a park. Everywhere the nearest deer signals the nearest dark. A buck looks up. The touch of his rack against wet bark whispers a syllable singular to deer. The next one hears and shifts. The next head stops and lifts deeper and deeper into the park. Mm. That I have watched those deer. I have felt that domino progression uh. of it. And one of the joys of what, what's happening here is that we can hear all that rhythmic play, all the interior uh, rhymes that I love so much, the delicacy of the language. So that's, I've been in Deer Park, I've seen those deer. It's very good for us to step over the threshold in the beginning of this process between us. And how about a few more poems just to keep, keep the whistle wet? Sure, and I, I thought I would read a few more Marini poems. Uh, not that it will be so obvious, although this one is called, uh, this call is called Expectations, and it's about waiting for it to rain, which of course we do a great deal of in Marin County. Especially right now, when it ain't been raining. Um, expectations. We expect rain to animate this creek, these rocks to harbor gurgles, these pebbles to creep downstream a little, those leaves to circle in the eddy, the stains and gloss of wet. The bed is ready but no rain yet. Mm. Do you sit by a creek and let it fill you? Um, or are these just observations over the years that burble out when, when you're ready? I would say that I am essentially an opportunist. Uh, I am not, in, not to much of a degree a nature poet. Mm -hmm. uh, I use deer. 
I use creeks, I use the idea of rain, I use anything in order to manipulate some feeling or idea that I'm trying to pr pursue. Oh. So uh, uh, I always kind of have to laugh if people say, oh, you must like animals so much. <laughs> I mean, I do like animals, yeah. but, I'm right. not, but I'm not someone who is uh, paying attention to the environment or the creatures of it, but boy, for, particularly you, their own sake. You are really paying attention paying attention to something very, very clear and, you know, to me. So that, to me, that poem is a meditation, which I would have only gotten sitting by the creek for maybe an hour or two. Well, I would say, I mean, I, I, I don't want to, to malign my own, my own self either, because I do think that this has a creek in it. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, that yes, I have witnessed that, yes. and I do love that uh, yes. for itself. Mm -hmm. But I am also interested in... Mm, using it for my own ends. Of course, uh, the doubleness uh, that's going on all the time in poems. I love, by the way, your introduction. That's something we don't get in the book. So I would like it if you just keep reading and introducing and reading oh, sure. and introducing. Sure, I would. Uh, I, let me do a couple of other Marin poems. This one is called Green Hills, and I want you to think about the soft green hills. Like if you're on 101, mm -hmm. uh, think about the, the spring hills, those glorious hills. I mean, they're all over Marin, but you can really see them up, going up 101. Um, this is a tiny poem. And it's, it's a kind of a tricky, rhetorically, it's sort of a trick. Green hills. They're green flanks and swells are not flesh in any sense matching ours, we tell ourselves, nor their green breast, nor their green shoulder, nor the languor of their rolling over. Mm. Of course, the fun of that is that when you tell people that this isn't flesh in any sense matching ours, yes. It introduces the, the idea that actually it is. Right, it's the elephant know. in the room. <laughs> oh, I see her right there, the big gnaw. That's beautiful. Well, hey, since you said the elephant in the room, maybe I ought to read a poem called The Elephant in the Room. What do you think? Very good. Okay. Quite a segue. Yeah, it, as though we'd planned it, which we didn't. Yes. But you know who plans things, not us. <laughs> that, of my own belief. <laughs> I, tr I trust the planner. All right, here we are. Uh, I, uh, I'm particularly fond of, uh, of uh, cliches or uh, uh, old expressions that, that uh, survive in our language. I, I think they survive because they are usually so beautiful and apt uh, mm -hmm. and rich and efficient. Yeah. Um, so that in my work there are, are, are many uh, contemplations of something like the elephant in the room or, or the other shoe or yeah. uh, uh, counting your chickens uh, mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. Um, so, the elephant in the room. It isn't so much a complete elephant as an elephant sense, perhaps pillar legs supporting a looming mass, beyond which it's mostly a guess. In any case, we manage with relative ease. There are just places in the room that we bounce off when we come up against, not something we feel we have to announce. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I think of the blind men yeah. and the elephant. And, sure. And, yeah. and, and the grope and the look askance, which I sense in that poem. Well, I, I, it, the poem kind of makes me laugh because because usually people think of the elephant in the room as being something so horrible and that yes. it has to be avoided. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this poem, it's, it, you just bump into it and it's not that terrible and it's not right. so awful to have an elephant in your room. Right, and they're always there, so you <laughs> might as well greet them, kind of. You don't, you don't embrace them because, as you said, it's not solid, mm. but it's, it reminds right. they're there. you. Yeah. Yes, yes. But they're not so awful. Right, definitely. Uh, and I enjoyed rhyming bounce and announce, yep. you know. 
there are just places in the room that we bounce off when we come up against, mm -hmm. which is a very awkward kind of grammar, but I like mm -hmm. that. Right, but it's the awkwardness of the experience <laughs> because we're always <laughs> bouncing off that which we do not want to uh, particularly embrace or even acknowledge. Not something we feel we have to announce. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, so let's just keep going with the I Ching of um, okay. opening the book and seeing what all comes right. up. I, I'm going to just open blindly, oh. all right? Ah, here's a poem about age. It's actually called Age. And it, it offers two different possibilities of how one might age. As some people age, they kinden. That's a, a, a neologism. I spelled it K-I-N-D-E-N, -E which would simply mean to become more kind. Yep. Right? As some people age, they kinden. The apertures of their eyes widen. I do not think they weaken. I think something weak strengthens until they are more and more it, like letting in heaven. But other people are mussels or clams, frightened. Steam or knife blades mean open. They hear heaven. They think boiled or broken. Mm. That, is, that speaks very, very powerfully. And I love the image of weakness as strength because we do become, you know, we keep, you know, we do as much as we can to strengthen ourselves, but the flesh doesn't work that way. Well, it is interesting to think that that something weak strengthens. Yeah. And it could appear... Let me read it again, may yes, I? Yes, please. As some people age, they kinden. The apertures of their eyes widen. I do not think they weaken. I think something weak strengthens until they are more and more it, like letting in heaven. But other people are mussels or clams, frightened. Steam or knife blades mean open. They hear heaven, they think boiled or broken. Mm -hmm. So that there are you know, yeah. two possibilities. There's a watchword these days, um, the power of vulnerability. Um, that would be in the the in this the the yeah. uh, you know what was behind door right. number one here exactly and behind and door number two is something a little less pleasant. You better. And I've it. always thought that I was probably going to go through door number two. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, I think of life um, as a kind of sometimes horribly tenderizing agent when you well, go you through sound really like a real hard stuff. Door number one person. I yeah. it's it's yeah. been yeah. like that yeah. for me. And obviously for you. And you better let it in because soon there won't be anything to <laughs> let in to anymore. Let's keep going like this. All right, this. all right. That worked well. Yep. Oh, here's a spring poem. And since it is spring, why not? And um, this poem actually has to do with uh, something that's always fascinated me. I, mean, I suppose it fascinates all, us all. And that is how in the world anything changes, how change occurs how we ch change our minds. I f I'm quite resistant to change. Uh, I'm not proud of that, but it's just part of my nature. I, I'm, I'm resistant, and yet I am changed. And so anyhow, spring is, of course, a perfect illustration of change. Uh, here's a little contemplation. Winter, like a set opinion, is routed. What gets it out? The imposition of some external season? or some internal doubt. I see the yellow maculation spread across bleak hills of what I said I'd always think, a stippling of white upon the gray, a pink the shade of what I said I'd never say. Mm. Maculation? Um, I know it from eyes. Uh, think of uh, immaculate. Oh. Immaculate means yeah. without spot. Yeah, spotted. So maculations yes. are spots. Okay. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And because we never use maculations. I know. We use immaculate. I know. And that's, it's a kind of a tweak inside the poem that whether you know it or not, it gets your attention to the joys and wonders and mysteries of language. Because most of your words are very, 
you know, there are not a lot of fancy words in your poetry. Well, I like to have some $10 words yes. and a lot of 25 cent words. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Excellent yeah. currency. Um, I, I, your, your poems are speaking for your life, so I don't even want to get into life story. I just want to keep going like this if it's okay with you. Sure. Oh, here's a poem. Uh, new Clothes. This is called New Clothes. And it's, uh, of course, the emperor's new clothes. Something else I like, children's stories. <clears throat> um, and uh, it's a poem really contemplating, <clears throat> as the emperor uh, experienced, flattery, uh, about the effects of flattery. And I wrote this before I had been well flattered. I've been <sighs> massively flattered now. Yes. But I've always found that it was very important to think about things before I knew much about them. Uh, I mean, I can't write about anything if I know much about it. Uh, I, I, there's a paralyzing quantity of, of, of knowledge or feeling that you can have. And you, it, at least for me, it's necessary to write before I reach the point where I know too much or feel too much. Mm -hmm. It has to be a little more uh, wispy. Yeah. So, new clothes. The emperor who was tricked by the tailors is familiar to you, but the tailors keep on changing what they do to make money. Tailor means to make something fit somebody. Be guaranteed they will discover your pride. You will cast aside something you cherish when the tailor whispers, only you could wear this. It is almost never new clothes such as the emperor bought, but it is always something close to something you've got. Wow, and I like close and clothes. I'm glad you like yes. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's a close rhyme, huh? Yeah. Or a close rhyme. Yes. That's close a, but not exact. That's a beauty. It's fun. I get a big kick out of sliding sounds off each other like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. Okay. Right. Let's it's it's almost effortless. Oh, uh, but but I I also love your remark about if you know too much, it kind of deadens it. Um, so that's the nature of what we're doing be, right here. You become unable to go yeah, go forward or right. to please yourself. Yes. This poem is called Cheshire, and it's thinking about the Cheshire Cat from, uh, or it's using the the Cheshire Cat to think about something else from Alice in Wonderland. It's not the cat, it's the smile that lasts, toothy and ruthless. I like saying toothy yeah. and ruthless. It's facts like this we like to resist, how our parts may lack allegiance to the whole, how the bonds may be more casual than we know, how much of us might vanish, and how well some separate part might manage. Mm, vanish, vanish. It's cha -cha -cha. a scary poem, really. Yes, yes. And again, it has to, I, I see as you characterized yourself as someone who has been resistant to change, that each of these little, uh, is a springboard for a poem. When the resistance releases, there's so much under there. Well, I, I think I would state that differently. I okay. think you're, you have a point. I, uh, I'm, of course, speaking for myself. Uh -huh. I, 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 I would say that, that when something stops fitting right or becomes uncomfortable or, or there's a gap between w my assumption and what I'm seeing is in fact the case or all of our assumption and yeah. what suddenly seems to me to be the case, mm -hmm. then there is, it's that little gap that I'm trying to, trying to, touch or probe in, a, in writing. Yes. I, I want to know something in a place that has just opened up. In other words, there, was not, there, was not, there, there wasn't any place there. Now there is a place. What is that? Yes. Yeah. And of course, it flows right into the, the age and opening poem. And it you know, that you just mm. read. And also the, you know, Rumi telling us to stay awake. And when you think you know what's happening, you go to sleep. And so, I, and, but I love the fact that in your case, it's a tiny gap. It's not an abyss or an explosion. Oh, sometimes, sometimes so, they're big. Oh yes. 
Here's a poem uh, called, uh, I also like, I mean, I'm, I'm very attracted to individual words. They, they uh, are just the beauty of them, like the word dog leg, which uh, is so physical mm -hmm. and so perfectly describes a, a tangent, something going off at an angle. Uh, and it, it demonstrates it in the leg of an actual dog. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, this is thinking about going off at an angle. Dog leg. Bird's legs do, of course, all dog leg, giving them that bounce. But these are not normal odds around the house. Only two of the dog's legs dog leg, and two of the cat's. Fifty-fifty. That's as bad as it gets, usually, despite the fear you feel when life has angled brutally. Mm. I never thought of the leg, the conjunction, the, the arrangement of legs with animals um, like that. I never, I mean, of course, they kneel down this way and then they tuck under that way. And the birds, the birds' yeah. legs do all go backwards like right. that. Right. But only, right. The, only the back legs of exactly. the dog do. Yeah. But that also has fear, sadness, darkness. Well, it's when your life end. dog legs. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, I, once again, I was saying earlier that I... I am interested in, say, the arrangement of a dog's legs or a bird's legs, yeah. but I am, I am interested in them as they advance something that I am trying to understand. Yeah, yeah, and that's a wonderful way to move through life if you can do it. Yours is just a, a little more focused and refined than us who are fumbling through. Oh, I'm fumbling too. Oh, <laughs> fumb fumble is good, I believe, um, because otherwise it comes out too pat. And there's nothing ever pat in any of your poems. Well, I've just been thinking, that's so interesting. I, I was just thinking recently about uh, the necessity for stumbling. I mean, mm. we have to walk so we can stumble. I mean, yeah. it, that I, I don't think we can find out anything without tripping. You know walking is falling. Well, it's, yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but in that tripping, mm -hmm. you, you are so alert yes. and you are using, you are using elements of balance and, mm -hmm. and elements that, that you have in you in new ways, new emergency ways. Yeah. Uh, tripping always or stumbling creates an emergency and the emergency evokes powers that you don't know you have. That's right. Now I want you to read Relief, which is Relief. right about that. Oh. And, and as you're looking for it, I will um, tell watchers that I always find a poem to share at holiday times and when I read Relief that year that's the poem I shared with my friends and that's and and, and it seems to be about this particular subject. Hmm. Maybe so? I'm not sure I see the okay, connection. Okay, I'll tell but, you uh, after you okay. read it. Uh, relief. And it's a little investigation of what relief is, how mm -hmm. relief feels. We know it is close to something lofty Simply getting over being sick or finding lost property has in it the leap, the purge, the quick humility of witnessing a birth, how love seeps up and retakes the earth. There is a dreamy, wading feeling to your walk inside the current of restored riches, clocks set back, disasters averted. Well, my association is whenever I trip or stumble and do not hurt myself, mm -hmm. I feel that relief. Mm -hmm. It's like an epiphany every time. And I do trip and stumble. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, even though it's talking about a different kind of stumbling, it's the same experience internally for me. So we have um, about three minutes left. Oh, I could read half a book in three minutes. Oh, I know you can. They're nice and short. Just oh, here, here's a poem. Perfect. It's called If She Only Had One Minute. Maybe I should save it, huh? No, do it now. Oh, okay. It showed up. If she only had one minute. If she only had one minute, what would she put in it? She wouldn't put, she thinks. She would take. Suck it up like a deep lake. Bloat indiscriminate on her last instant. Feast on everything she had released, dismissed, or pushed away. 
She would make room and room, as though her whole life of resistance had been for this one purpose. On the last minute of the last day, 